coming here as a murderer or a drug dealer, but the fact is, is that a lot of them are. And in my point of view, let's say we let in 50 Me Mexican, uh, Mexicans to this country, 49 of them are good, good working citizens who want to contribute. If the one, one of them kills my daughter, I don't want any of them in the country. Speaking of your family that went through, through this very similar process that I'm about to say, a couple of days ago, Donald Trump was in the border. He was there and he said, our country's full, we cannot take you anymore. He wants to right? close and he the border. Was refer he was referring to the hundreds and hundreds of Central American migrants, many of whom are fleeing violence, um, who are here to request asylum. So raise your hand, and actually let's start by you. Do you believe that this specific community of Central American asylum seekers deserve to come into the United States? Well, uh, if you look at the history of asylum, it's based, it's based on religious persecution things of that nature. Now, you know, we're painting asylum with a broader brush of where if there's violence in your home country, you, you deserve, yeah, to, you deserve to get asylum. Yes, I know that. So you deserve to get asylum. And well, I don't, I don't know if that, if that should be the case, if we should just accept anyone from, ev from everywhere just because they're escaping a bad situation. I don't think that that automatically yes. grants you asylum. Yeah, like, yeah. Also, your fucking mom. Asylum. First, would before, you argue that your mom could be one of those people? I would absolutely argue that my mom, under different circumstances, could have been one of those people. So it is a very touchy situation, me being a Mexican American, and, and noting that my mom has become successful, and it is hard, but at the same time, we have a problem already with poverty in this country. We have a problem with veterans who aren't getting the care that they need after, after literally getting blown up for, for the right for us to be here right now and have this discussion. And I think before we start taking in everyone else and their problems, we need to address the problems that we have in this country now. Anyone that wants to respond to him? Go My ahead. issue is that some of these ideals, why they might have some aspects set in reality, it creates a sort of hysteria and it creates a sort of anti-immigrant sentiment where my brother who was born here, people always tell him go back to his country. And the thing about ICE and some of the bills that are going on right now are not just, you know, they're not just deporting criminals. There are mothers, there are families, actual families that are being Well, coming to this country illegally in itself makes you a criminal. To, if you come you to this country illegally, you're not. Dude, what the fuck? This dude is like, this dude is so insane, dude. This dude is so insane. Like, he's just like, I fucking hate immigrants so bad that it's fine that okay, my, love my mom people is love. Love. Okay. Um, they're, they're, it is it is separating families. It's very divisive. Why, why didn't he have such sentiments against his own wives? He seems to love immigrants in his bedroom. So I don't, I don't understand. Not to be vulgar, but I'm saying is just keeping it real. So I've been trying to talk for a while. So like, I want to talk about uh -huh. your last comment. Like, oh, Trump said these things. Do you consider this racist? That, that makes racism seem rhetorical, like as if it's a rhetorical device, instead of it being like a systematic issue that's actively destroying lives, like family separation. So like for people to decide, well, is this racist? Just by the sound of it is kind of Silly to me in the fact, because the fact that Excuse separating me. a family is racism. I'm out of control. Slavery was racism, and it, it worked off NATO slavery. Um, separating these families at the border is, uh, is slavery. And uh, talking about these families that are coming over, why are they coming over? We talked about MS-13, you called them rapists, gangbangers, so on and so on. But those are American gangs. They're created in a very particular form of carceral racism. And they were deported back to these countries, and these... And they, they weren't even from there. They were raised here. They developed these types of habits in order to exist within a racialized American economy. Yeah, but they're also in those countries. So, because they got the... Oh, my fucking God. My man just, just described gang violence in El Salvador better than, like, 98% of liberal media outlets that talk about MS-13 in a, sh in a shorter period of time, too supported there by the U.S., you created that problem. And also, for the yeah, fact she that... Did. We did, hmm? I didn't create that problem. She didn't create not that. Not talking about America. I'm talking about Americans. Right, but if, that's oh, not my problem now. Okay, that's, that's fine. You, you were talking about the American position all day, so I, I created America. I used it as a rhetorical device for the American position that deported these people. Right. So let's talk about the fact that you guys brought up that family and separation is racist. I have a big problem when they're using children at the border to get into this country that is not their children. So either there's DNA tests or we're going to... Bro, 
deport that person. Okay, I'm done. She needs to get deported right now. Just her. That's my new policy. Okay, build a fucking wall around her. Build a wall around her and, and deport her at the same time with the wall that we built around her. Oh my fucking God, dude. She went from like, yo, I'm so skeptical about the fucking mainstream media narratives to like literally in, in, in less than 24 minutes went from I'm skeptical about the media narratives because like groupies can't technically be harassed or groped or raped to like, we need to DNA test swab. We need to put cotton swabs in every fucking baby's mouth. Okay. That passes uh, through this border. I'm sick of this shit. People are finding literal discarded babies Excuse me. to come I'm into sorry. this country. I'm out of control. I voted I for Hillary, for by that. the way. I can say this, but I know, I know that there's fucking babies out there. I mean, look, these are Latin American countries. Who knows what babies are doing out there, okay? There's babies out there. They're walking around like, yo, I'm, I'm a fucking baby. Like, can you take me to America? And random people are picking them on the streets and, and taking them over the border to come into this country. And we need to fucking use calipers and cotton swabs to make sure that these babies' skulls are... are their, their skull measurements are in line with their parents to understand if they have the perfect skull to be cops. Or white, in which case they can stay. We're gonna have to separate you to make sure that that child belongs to that parent. But there's this thing called human nature. I feel like I don't so know. You're okay behind that people, makeup, so you're okay you just with like people. lost. You just insulted human her. Of course, you're in your feelings. I don't care. You're okay. Because she told me I'm in my feelings. I'm not feeling that way. Let's talk about the 11 million undocumented immigrants that are here. What is the first thing that comes to mind when I say that? Let's go around. I think we should give them citizenship, and that might surprise you guys, but I do think there are there. Bro, your mom. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Bro, hey, that might surprise you guys, but I'm going to actually have a human take for once, okay? I was doing the non-human thing up until this point, but but now I'm going to do the human take. It, it, it could come across as surprising. They're already here. They've been here for a while. They're in our schools. They're, they're in our restaurants, they're, you know, they're, they're, every, they're everywhere. They're a part of us. They should be given citizenship. I think I agree with him that a lot of them that have been here, maybe they should get amnesty. I think, you know, they've been here for so long. They're pretty much American by this point. But there are some that they don't represent American values. And she means the brown ones, chat. She means the ones that are brown. They shouldn't be here. What exactly are American values? Uh, murder, Stealing, imperialism, murder. No, I'm saying life, liberty, and happiness. It's right in our constitution. It's right in our constitution. Respond to that question and then you go. It's right in our constitution. The life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That is the American dream. Literally every single person that crosses the border is coming to America to pursue life, liberty, and also the pursuit of uh, the uh, fuck. Holy shit. What American power? And it's not it's, right it's, right it's right in our constitution. It's right in our constitution. Respond to that question and then you go. It's right in our constitution. The life, liberty, and pursuit well, you're not even of American, happiness. That is the American, American dream. dream. I have an American passport. I'm a citizen. No, I wasn't born here, but I remember you the American going around. Let's keep going. You know, I hear a lot of things too, like just amnesty, you know, at the snap of a finger. I mean, a lot of them, you know, if they're criminals, I think they got to be deported. I'm not them, you know, gone. Open borders, and You know, they've they earned their their chance at, at becoming citizens. What happened to this guy's microphone? Were they just like, yo, you kind of look like a sociopath, so we're just going to not really give you the same. We're going to give you the Andrew Yang treatment. Like, I mean, he just look at this dead eyed fucking freak, dude. Look at this dead eyed freak deliver this perspective. Like, yo, a lot of these people are just immigrants we'll and, and they're, they're rapists and shit. A lot of them, you know, if they're criminals, I think they got to be deported. A lot of Shut the fuck up, dude. What do you mean a lot of them are criminals, they got to be deported? This dumbass can't even do racism right. Like, literally can't, can't do racism correctly. He's just like, a lot of them are... A lot of them are criminals, you know. You got to deport them, I think. A lot of them, you know, their families and... You know, they, they've earned their their chance at, at becoming citizens. I almost find it disgusting that people are we're really talking about how to legitimize 
like, the life of a human being. Thank you. Like, why, be, so they should be given citizen, citizenship because of this, right? I think people should be granted human dignity, period. No matter if you're a Palestinian baby, if you're an American baby, regardless, My give man. them your humanity. There's a report out there that says that it's going to take almost two years to identify the thousands of families that were separated at the border. Who thinks it was immoral to separate families at the border? I am for people, and I feel like the things, the hate, the stereotype, it's affecting real human beings and causing people not to see people as people, but as objects, as this thing with an emotion attached to it. And that level of discrimination is causing families to be separated, people are losing their lives, they're dying, and that is the issue I have with it. Anyone that does not see it immoral, what do you have to say? I mean, you, you I just want to say, the only reason I don't see it as immoral is just because, like, you or me or any of us here were to commit a crime here in America, our, we would be separated from our family. We'd go to jail. Like, it, it's the same thing that would... Yeah, but, like, you don't go to jail for throwing trash on the fucking ground. You don't go to jail for jaywalking, dumbass. You shouldn't go to jail for fucking misdemeanor, like... Like crossing over an imaginary line. Like, what a fucking idiotic take. Why, why does no one, why does no one ever confront these people? What happened to anybody else who committed a crime in America? And, I, and, and crossing the border illegally is committing a crime. I would also like to say that you, so there needs to be some criminal. sort of misdemeanor. You can't just assume that these people are families. You need to validate these things. You can't just take it as face. Oh, this is your mother? Fine. Because it's been documented that that's not the case. That, that, that the coyotes are using children and as cover, saying that they're their dad for protection. You need to validate these things. You can't just take someone's words and, and take it for face value. And just to play devil's advocate. Devil's advocate here. Imagine if that was your mother with you, um, but it would, was you feel, would you feel okay if your mother and you were separated? No, I would be sad, absolutely. I, didn't, I never said that separating the families isn't, isn't horrible, because it is horrible, and it is saddening. It Wait, what? You just argued for why it's, it must be done? What? Bro, is this guy, like, is this guy so stupid that he forgets his mom is, like, undocumented and crossed the border illegally? Like, in between his takes or something? And, and just look but at the images of, of the conditions. That stopped. It is sad, but at the same time, just because something is sad or just because it's unfortunate doesn't mean that you can't have... You need to have some sort of way to validate these things. You can't just take someone's words and say, oh, this is my father. Okay, good to go. The people who are talking about this are unaffected by this. The people that Excuse this is me. happening to are Central American indigenous communities. The, Claudia Gomez was a mom, Maya woman, or, or little girl, really, who got shot at the border. There are families being celebrated. These are indigenous children. And this is literally replicating the Indian Removal Act. This is this, not only displacing indigenous communities from their pueblos, but also separating them from their families, which is the history of the United States. And this is they're literally a continuing. To come here and do yes, that. they're, do, they're choosing. Do, out of force. Not my, at, back home, I came here, my cousin stayed there, and guess what happened? At 18, he died. That is the reality that we're escaping. And unfortunately, these gangs, these uh, 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 instability of our countries often come from the United States, going to our communities, and trying to start a business there by displacing us. Yeah, you, But that was the past. Th this we're is in the still going now. on. I we're in the present. Yeah. 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 It's still, like it's it's still going on. I feel like it's, you have more invested yourself in another country than here. You because, care more about another country this than is, here. This is my problem. You know, these are borders. These are man-made borders. I don't care. I care about people. Period. Sally, this is, that's just I, I know. The way I know. I know. Like, that's I know. The world. There's a border, you, border you care. everywhere. I, the world. I, I there's a it. border you right care. now you in Colombia. In Colombia, you we care. don't want you more. Care. There's a million Look. Venezuelans that are in Colombia. Yes, you care so much about American people. Congratulations. I'm not like that. I'm sorry. I I do think about my community back home. You assimilate to Americanness, oh, and that is good. This should be home now. Unfortunately, should be home. You shouldn't keep saying back home. Again, this is coming from. From a point of view, is, is like it's separatism. Literally, like you guys are acting like as if we're not all human. Exactly, yeah. so humanity is being stripped. They're being dehydrated. They're being there's murdered. Let me ask you this: There's a, there's many Venezuelans know that that are coming to Miami and South Florida. 
in your eyes, is there any difference between some of the Central American families that are at the border and some of the Venezuelans that are trying to come? I mean, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of differences. One of them is the majority of, not the majority, but there's a, a very large ma uh, majority of Venezuelans here who have a lot of money. Some of them are even uh -oh. chavistas. Some of them are, you know, they, 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 they're kind of like took their money, came here, and they have businesses. Um, so in terms of like humanity, no, they're all humans, but um, the majority of the poor Venezuelans are going to countries like Peru, countries like Colombia, and countries like Brazil. The rich ones are all here. Right, but there, there is, I mean, we do know factually, right, that there are many Venezuelans that are trying to leave the Maduro government and that are trying to seek asylum here. So my question is for everyone, do they deserve the same opportunity to seek asylum than a Central American family right yes. now? I feel everybody yeah. is the same. Everybody has, the, what people don't understand <laughs> is there is laws and regulations to, to... No, people don't understand that. Yeah, thanks. People don't understand that there's laws and regulations. Hey, chat. There's laws and regulations. I know that you probably don't understand that, but... So just so you guys know. Yeah, yep. Write them write him down, okay? To claim asylum, there's about five different... Don't quote me right now, but there's about five different options. Uh, political reasons, if you're being prosecuted for political reasons. I have a friend that uh, claimed asylum that way. Uh, if for race, for, I mean, like... Religious like, like they're legit persecution. Yeah, exactly. It's not just because your town was affected by some sort of a gang and now you're poor and then so you come up. It's not like that. It's like legitimate reasons. You have to verify paperwork to be to claim asylum. When you think of this American dream, right? Oh, God. What type of American dream? It may not exist, and you tell me that. It may not exist, right? But when you do think of this idea of the American dream, what, what does that look like for the Latinx community? In my opinion, the American dream is opportunity. And even though our, I, our country is not perfect, I think there's more opportunity here to succeed than any other country in the world. And I, I mean, think, I can't I argue. Think, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you sorry. off. I think that the American dream, what essentially it means is uh, people from the global south coming here and then obtaining the privilege to ignore the United States' involvement in the global south. What does that look like for you? To me, as he said, the dream is opportunity. It is to come here and make money. It is to have my own business. It is to succeed. I don't necessarily think education means success. I have many friends and many people that I know are millionaires and didn't go to school, didn't finish the work, college dropouts. And I, I actually agree with you, and we talked about this earlier, about the pharmaceutical industry and how anti-Big Pharma I am. And even though we may have our disagreements, most of us just want to reboot in all the establishments. And this means our healthcare, these like pharmaceuticals, it means education, it means everything else. But what I don't want is to give the government Control more power because they're already messing power everything up. People. Yeah. The less, the less government reliance, yeah. the better. Walk into a DMV, see how that's run. Walk into a small business, see how that's run. Yeah. Yeah, the less government relies, the better. Also, totally in favor of of making sure that government is uh, protecting these like imaginary borders uh, with as much money as possible being spent on on just all these cruel policies enacted by these sausage looking Andes over here. Like this guy, this guy could be a fucking a border patrol officer, honestly. And then. And then, like, not only that, but we also should probably put fucking, like, you know, DNA tests in place to make sure that every person that's coming in is, like, related, because I think that Fox News said that one time. You, uh, United you get Postal government Service. out of the way, I promise you, things will take care of themselves. The, the more the, the, more the government puts out. their hands in everything, the more things get ruined, okay? The roads will be for destroyed. Me, for me, the biggest issue that has happened with the change of government is how people relate to each other. I think a lot of respect has been lost. And policy aside, which is really important, Excuse me. I think I'm sorry. I'm I look for a day when people can come together and disagree, but still respect each other. Our country has become so, so, so divided that you can't even sit down with your neighbor. Oh, I can't even oh, like, it's, but it's worse, it's worse than ever. No, we just no, are no, finally I'm trying, to, I'm trying to agree. I'm trying to agree. Bro, I think that guy's a cop, by the way. You guys know I have, like, you guys know that I, I don't think phrenology is real except for cop skulls, right? He does have a cop skull. The only one raising their hand, go. What do you have to say? Okay. What, what, what I will say is, you know, we can, we can agree to disagree depending on the issue, 
But if I meet someone and they say I want your parents supported, I'm not going to be their friend. I'm not going to be like, oh, I agree to disagree with you. That affects my life personally. I had to drop out of school for two years because of Trump's administration. Would you ever be friends with any of the people that voted for Trump here? Fuck no. I would not. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh -huh, I'm sorry. You? That's I mean, unfortunate. I meant that That's unfortunate. I think you're a nice person, so that's really unfortunate. Pers that's sad. Per personally, that's really sad. Personally. <laughs> Triggered. Speaking, if any of them want to deport my families, if that really is their opinion, then I'm not going to be their friend. Okay, what do you have to say to that? I look at everybody as an individual here, and I base you on your character. A lot of these people have very strong character. I don't judge them off of their political views or how they feel. Yeah, because your political views are not associated with your character whatsoever. Um, also, every liberal's a cuck and a beta, by the way. Like, what a fucking dumbass, dude. Oh, yeah, I... I no, it's like... It's like, I want to be a Nazi... It's just, it's just a different political opinion. It doesn't say anything about my character whatsoever. And don't judge me off of it. You know. It's nice, dude. Good. ...about what they think the world is doing and imperialism, all this stuff. Like, I don't, I don't really, like, I just feel like that's sad that we can't all walk away from here and go to one of these really nice bars here in Wynwood and have a fucking drink. It's not that, it's not that I have any hatred to anyone that, ha that voted for Trump, but to me, it's, it's, again, like it's affecting people's in their everyday life. So if you have an opinion that I felt like can hurt me, can hurt someone that I love, I'm not gonna sit down and have a casual drink with you. That just doesn't make any sense to me. But I can see the pain that that causes. And... Yeah, yeah, because I'm a people person. I love people but, at the end of the day, right. so. So, except for those dirty brown people. That's the, the people I like are, are other white Latinos like myself. Uh, but the, the brown people, I'm not a fan of them. Uh, we should deport them. I'm going to vote for literally the president. I'm going to vote for literally the president who said that we should vote. I mean, we should build a wall and, and said that they were, you know, said that they were uh, rapists and murderers. But I love people, by the way. And I, I love to... Uh, I love to... Uh, base all of my assumptions on individuals based on merit, by the way, except I voted for a president that literally said Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, just this, I think that. this is why we're here, right? Because yeah. if, so I, maybe there is no common ground, maybe there is, but this I is I also this don't want to be here. misunderstood. I don't want people to feel like, you know, anything goes, but I do feel that sometimes it's, it's, it's a communication thing, and you might not understand my point today, but if I could have more conversation with you, if we could build more bridges together, maybe over time you could see my point, or maybe over time you could change your mind, or, or maybe some aspects of me. I'm not so rigid about everything that I think and feel. For those of you that can vote, that have the, the privilege of voting, when you go to the ballot box, what's the most important issue that you're gonna be voting on? We're talking about policies and, and politics. Right? We get to talk about it in this air-conditioned room. No, oh, this is a privilege. Right, this 100%. is an extreme... People are literally dying right now. Like, that is a fact. People are dying right People now. People die every day. Right? My God, you are exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking owned, dude. Hey, people die every day. So when I kill someone, it's perfectly okay because people die every day, forehead. So... Like, I mean, people like, die every day. No, is that not true? People die every day. Hey, people die every day, so you can actually murder people now, according to fake Kim Kardashian over here. Hey, I also don't feel like politics was necessarily ever constructed for the people. I'm talking about the down the you know down home grassroots people. It is an elite structure within itself where you elect the leaders of whatever things. So if we look strictly to politicians who are paid to do what they do and shake hands to do what they do, we're going to be completely lost. So will you raise your hand if you're not going to vote in 2020? No, I'm also not. Uh, I'm voting. No, everyone plans. Everyone that can vote plans on voting. For the ones of you that did vote for Donald Trump in 2016, will you be voting for him again in 2020? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. The, the we know you will, you fucking sociopath. You don't need, you don't need to agree, OK? Look at him. The only time he ever emotes is when he's thinking about voting for Donald Trump for the second time. 
What a fucking sicko, dude. What a sicko. De the Democrats aren't really producing anybody that would capture my vote. That Why are you going to represent vote for him? Like, my values? I mean, you're talking about, we've been talking about uh, politics and, you know, what, what will stand up to you on a ballot. And, you know, there's been a, this lately, you have politicians like Bernie Sanders, AOC, who want, want to give people, they want to have more government programs. They want to hand out more things. I don't think it's right to keep people dependent on the government. I think that you don't want, the less amount of people dependent on the government for anything is a good thing. That's why overall I'm conservative. That's why we'll be voting for Donald Trump. I want people to be lifted up on their own instead of having to rely on the government for a job, for a place to live, for welfare. Like you want to talk about handouts? Let's talk about these corporate handouts. You are anti-establishment. Really think about what corporate establishments are to the foundation of America. All Relying ask on the government for, people, for things, the less free they are. If all they're all dependent on the government for something, that gives is, them less liberty, that gives them less choice, that lives in... to give people the right to live, right? That's give people life. the right to live. You're working through college so then you can get a better job so then you can live a better life. Like, that is life. I had a job That's how you are socially responsible, okay. economically okay. responsible. Like, you have to work shit jobs now and go to college you so that okay? you can get a better... Do, do you think that's yes, okay? Yes, that's how you... Why should we... Okay. Say something and then we're gonna start wrapping it up. Go ahead. The United States still has colonies till this day. Puerto Rico, Guam, Virgin Islands, okay? In Puerto Rico, the Borican people there are still under colonialism and every product that goes to Puerto Rico has to touch American soil first and then Puerto Rico. And that affects the people. That means the products there are twice as much, three times as much, et cetera. So when we talk about rights that the United States are, are Americans, what Americans? Because Puerto Ricans are Americans. They're also like 40% like of your population is like on welfare. Yep. Oh. Because they're being colonized and constantly. Did you not and they've also never voted to be independent. So why don't they just be independent? Because you, they should just vote. Because the, like, they should just have that. Because strip themselves from the United States. They have had movements for independence. And those people, Oscar Lopez, the longest American political prisoner, was incarcerated for 36 years. These people, people are constantly demanding to be free and they're constantly being killed and arrested and incarcerated. I'm sorry for cutting you off. We could literally do this for 25 hours. Um, but again, going back to 2020, what are the policies that you want to see, give that you're not seeing? Give people a living wage. I'm graduating next year, and my degree is in education. And even as a person coming from the education realm, I do not believe that education is the way out. Give people a living wage. To me, I want to see that. I want that to be huge. Mass incarceration, that shit needs to stop. So we, I mean, where do we, there's so You're much. obviously like, not a business owner to try to demand what, as a business way, owner, you need to pay. anyone else. What are policies oh. that you want to see that are not? Bro, I love these videos because, like, they just put some of the dumbest fucking people who have some of the worst dehumanizing perspectives next to, like, actually, like, passionate actually passionate people who are well-versed on the subjects that they're discussing. And like, and it's, it's just straight up like, oh, hey, did you just give us your comprehensive analysis on like U.S. imperialism? Or hey, did you just talk about how Puerto Rico is still a U.S. colony alongside Guam? Okay, well, what do you think about this fake Kim Kardashian? Tell us about how uh, Hillary Clinton actually sucked adrenochrome from a baby's spine. And, and somehow that's related to, like, why Latin Americans should no longer come into the country. And it's just fucking insane. Like, those two people should not... Like, why? Why do those people have the same... Like, wh how? Why do those people have... Uh, like, they, they're voting. Okay? They're voting. Those fucking idiots are voting. Like, those are the two kinds of perspectives that you hear in these, in, under these circumstances. It is just so insane. And there's an entire fucking cottage industry dedicated to making sure that both sides are, like, exactly the same. Just fucking nuts. What's well, shaking is just my confidence. That's what's shaking. Not happening. And just you can just. My confidence in, in our future being better than our, our past. That's what's shaking. Start. I want to see less government. Less I government. Limited government. government. Less spending on the military. Less, Absolutely. Less spending less, everywhere. Less everywhere. 
Latinx. No, what, what does it mean to be Latinx? Me or any of my friends who are all Latin have never used this term Latinx before. I really don't like the term, and the interesting thing about it is the only time you become Latin or Latinx is when you're outside of your country, if that makes sense. Yo! I had a take like this. I'm just saying. I think Latinx is unironically uh, Western cultural imperialism. Because when you are where you are, you are, you are what the, whatever you are, where nationality. you are. Yeah. I mean, I identify as an Afro-Latina. To me, I didn't really, I felt separated from, I guess, the Latinx community because I wasn't Latin enough or whatever. Because once I started to identify with my blackness, I didn't know that the two things couldn't be combined. I felt like it had to be separate. I had no choice. Till then, I got an education, figured out these things, you know, called the truth, um, and realized that it, you know, that it's both inclusive. So, I mean, I understand why they chose Latinx because, you know, people don't like to be called Spanish because it's from the Spanish. Well, it's also because it's supposed to be gender neutral and more inclusive of non-binary uh, uh, people who are Latin. But like the language, uh, but like the original language itself has um, no distinction because Spanish is a gendered language. Conquistadores and all that stuff, but I identify personally as an Afro-Latina, not so much Latinx. I didn't even know that word existed until now. I don't even think it's a word at all. I feel like it's a way for people to kind of, you know, not offend. I mean, I might not know the exact origin, but I feel like it's a way for people to not use the gender pronouns in Spanish. Like, oh, you can't say Latino or Latina because we don't really know who they are. You know, we don't know how they identify themselves. And I mean, we've been using, you know, Hispanic people have been using that word for centuries such a long time and for all of a sudden you know have somebody tell me how i can talk or change the way for me to talk it's you know it can be a little insulting okay i take it back i'm saying latinx going forward i was an advocate for latin or latino until this guy said uh things and now i'm i'm just completely against that position okay never mind yep latinx all the way for me okay just absolute psycho just look at him just look at him dude just, just look at this psychopath, dude. Look at him talking with those fucking dead eyes, dude. Latino, Hispanic, whatever these words, they were given to us by different people. Those words, actually, we didn't use for centuries. I don't know where they got that information. It's relatively new terms. Uh, Latinx to me doesn't really make sense. I'm gonna be honest with you. Personally, if I go back home to my abuela and I say, "Oh, we're Latinos, we're Latinas, whatever," they're gonna, she's gonna be like, "No, like what? Yes. What is? What is that?" Yes. You know what I mean? And I would say that Latinx, instead of saying Latin, is forceful. It makes people think. It is intentional. It is something that is critiquing the st current status quo. Well, on that note, uh, thank you so much for this discussion. I know it got heated. Um, I know that at the end of the day, we still may disagree on many things. We may now agree a little bit more, but more than anything, I'm, I'm grateful for you. Everyone here is, is, is very smart, and, and I, I'm just, thank you very much for this, for this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What the fuck is Latinx? So meth is still a huge problem in this country, and that's something that you can really feel right here in Fresno, California. Bro, she's so fucking cool. Holy shit. You guys want to know something? I think um, there's a podcast called Come Town, and I like. I think they briefly talked about this. I, I wouldn't know. I've never listened to it myself, but um, they said something about like uh, like what they like in women. And wait, she follows me. Who is she? I don't know who she is. What's her name? Um, anyway, they were saying that you just like her because you have the same hair. 
What the fuck? What is going on? Oh, this is Jorge Ramos's daughter? Oh my god. Well, no wonder Jorge Ramos is hot as fuck, dude. Yeah, that beeping was coming from me. I don't know what the fuck that was. You guys heard that? Um... Also, Paola Ramos does not follow me. I don't know why you guys said that. That was a lie. Oh, shit. She does follow me on Instagram. Oh, damn. Okay, that was not a lie. I don't hear it either. I'm not God. Thank you, War TV. Um, anyway, what were we saying? What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. I don't know. She's like a Hillary Clinton, Obama White House person. Oh, anyway, we were talking about someone says something about her eyes, right? Someone says something about her eyes. And I was going to say, like, um, what the fuck? She's 44. How? Anyway, on the Come Town podcast, I think is a podcast. Not really sure. I've never listened to it. Um, they, I think, if they were to talk about stuff, they they would talk about probably like what they like in women. And one of them was the eyes, like weird eyes. That was what they referenced in the latest episode of the Come Town. I think podcast. Maybe if it's a podcast, don't know. Never heard of it. Never uh, saw it. But um. But anyway, I, I, that really resonated with me and I wanted to, I wanted to share that with, um, I wanted to share that with the, uh, the, the chat as well. When I was younger, I, and I still to this day kind of have this thing where like my, probably the weirdest thing that I like in a girl is, um, like lazy eyes, (laughs) not like, not like lazy eye, but. Hey, son, Stavi here. When's Turkey giving Constantinople back? Grease rules. Hell yeah, dude. Also, come on, come town. We need a replacement for Nick when he gets killed. And Adam is on his book tour. Um, I don't know who these people are. I don't know why they... I don't know who Stavi Baby is. It's probably a fake dono. So, uh, I don't know who Nick is. I've never seen the come town uh, podcast. So... 
when I say lazy eye, I mean this, like, like, like this, like droopy eyes. I, I, it's like sexy eyes, you know, like this, like, mm. I feel like that's really hot. I don't know why. That's, and that was things Hassan finds hot for no reason whatsoever. Uh, segment on the show. Yeah, I think it's weird. Whatever. <laughs> you mean like this? Yeah, this is what I mean. Yep. Like that. Um, exactly like that. Not No, no. Crazy eyes are hot too, but I, I really like lazy eyes. I was going to even mention this. Like the uh, a celebrity that has this is kind of weird because we're friends, but... Um, I will, oh my God, it came up immediately. A celebrity that has that kind of eyes, dude, is, this is embarrassing, but Sophia Bush has those eyes, kind of. Okay. We're Instagram friends. The Dobre eyes, yeah. No, not smoky eyes, like just like heavy eyelids. I don't know how to describe it, dude. Like this, like this. Girls that always look like this. Like that. Like the eyes you give mid sneeze, I get it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like this. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Malding is a condition circulating originating from Turkey, where the patient zero was found circa 1990. It's often described as a human version of molding. Certain milk products like ice cream are said to enhance the effects of molding. It's characterized by victims of baldness, lack of skill, and anger issues. <laughs> Subjects. <laughs> oh, fuck. I missed the rest of that copy pasta. That's for Nifio to a T. No, we can't make this the new emote. Dude. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Aubrey Plaza is a good example. Yes. Bedroom eyes. Subjects of the condition are also said to have decorated their room with books, antifa posters, and paintings of things that make them feel uneasy. <laughs> That's a very specific condition. It's. I wonder how many people have that. I would love to find out how many people have that condition. That would be. What's up, bum? Heard you were talking shit. Come on, come down and debate me, coward. Um, I don't know who this person is. He just donated five dollars, but thank you for the five dollar dono, Mr. Nick M Malen. Natalie Portman has it too, yes. Yes.
I think it's called podcast called. I mean, a lot of Asian girls have eyes like that. Equals P. Thank you, Adam Friedland. I am gay and a bug. <laughs> Thank you, Adam Friedland, for the $5 dono. Like I said, I don't know who these uh, donos are. I don't know where they're coming from, but... Have you talked about the Jeffrey Epstein thing a ton? Yeah, I talked about it yesterday, and I've talked about it before. I've written about it before. More men seem to have them. Antonio Banderas has crazy bedroom eyes. Jake Gyllenhaal, that kid from High School Musical. I don't know. I've never really noticed it. If you don't criticize bigotry such as homophobia, misogyny, and a particular religion for fear of being labeled a bigot, then you're a bigot. What? Um... Did I not finish the video already? We finished the video. What video do you want me to watch? <sighs> I mean, you should... What does he mean by particular religion? Like... Wait, first of all, I don't know who sent this to me, but this is Tariq Nasheed, okay? I don't know about Christopher Kukor, a YouTube man, but like, if he called the cops on Tariq Nasheed, it's not like calling the cops on a random black person, okay? Just, just let me just put that out there, okay? Like, <laughs> you know me, I, I, I've talked about... <laughs> I don't know the exact context of this situation, but the but the sheer fact that that Tariq Nasheed is the person uh, who is responsible for this video makes me feel like makes me feel a little suspicious about this. Okay. Tariq Nasheed is a uh, conspiracy theorist, uh, uh, hotep, kind of, but like not really. I don't fucking know what he is really, but he's just, is he a hotep? I think he is. He just fucking has a lot of hotep takes, so he probably might be. Um, what is this? I'll put it on his back when he's finished. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice cos. Guys, what are you dressed up like? You with? Isn't that any character? Just no, yourself? Just myself. So oh, nice. Know. Looks good. You look great yourself. I'm myself as well. And you? I'm myself too. You're yourself. Look at 
he's being nice. He just. Come on. It, it that's he's trying, dude. <laughs> he's trying. Oh god. <laughs> he didn't he didn't say anything bad like he just I know by the way for context this is at the fucking anime expo, okay? It's not like he walked up to a random person and was like, oh, like, are you dressed up as a character in the middle of the street? It was at the anime expo. So just for the record, like, I think that that probably changes the perspective <laughs> or changes the, the, the situation contextually. Love what you do, buddy. Keep doing you. Thank you, Lightweight. And, and he literally, and he immediately was like, oh, yeah, uh, that's cool. What about yourself? His save is so, it's cute. Like, it's literally cute where he's like, oh, I'm myself too. Like, in that moment. It's such an honest moment. And he just moves to the next person. <laughs> Fuck. It's just funny because I would definitely be in a situation like that where I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, what about you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> he said, I'm myself too. <laughs> he saved it so well. Okay, let's do it again. He's just like, he, he was just, uh, nice. Oh, nice cos. Guys, what are you dressed up like? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 but I'm not really just a certain character. I wish I was, though. You isn't that any character? Just no. yourself? Just myself. Oh, yeah. nice. Looks good. You look great yourself. I'm myself as well. And you? Look, this is just so... He's like, oh, looks good. I I'm myself as well. such a quick save it's just such a quick save it's just it's just like oh oh i'm myself as well and you <laughs> it's just cute it's like like, he's at the Anime Expo, okay? <laughs> oh, man, that's good. Okay. All right, fuck. I'm totally sober. But for those of you who think it's like... I am. Why is everyone capping me? When have I fucking hid uh, drugs from the chat? What is this? Oh no, is this bad? Oh, bro, good to see you. How are you? Wow, that's just amazing. Who are you dressed? Raven. Are you Raven? Yeah, we're just hard Christians. Are you guys from LA? <laughs> Wait, who are you dressed up? We're hard Christian. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> bro, look at him. <laughs> He doesn't know who yet. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, do you know him? No, but. Is that a streamer? Just, that guy that's like, Hare Krishna, that's how they woke all year. It's something religious. And you're like, who are you dressed up like? He thought it was a character, dude. 
Oh my god. He's like, yo, sick raiding costume, bro. <laughs> oh, he was so excited. Oh my god. John Zerka is the gas station t shirt buyer. He would go to fucking Los Angeles and buy a a, a California tank top with a bear on it. And he told you once. Oh, <laughs> and then I you said, who are you? Oh, bro, look at this right. Oh, my God. Holy shit. I'm so tired. Fuck, dude. <sighs> the Dobre boys have those. Just donating to hear this adorable donation voice say oop a boop a boop a woo woo. Anyway, here's some money for a cupcake and a candy bar. This was supposed to go towards buying my fiance's boyfriend his butterfingers. Get your tube sucked, buddy. Smile. Um, thanks, Big Lundy. <laughs> I'm not God. <sighs> Canoe was coming to see you today? Yeah, I hung out with him today. I worked out. For I'm YouTube. a black person. Sprague, I'm glad to hear you're still black. And thanks for two months of support, man. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color, or is it? What? That's... Why did he say that? That's crazy. I mean, this Jeffrey Epstein shit is, you know, it's heartbreaking because he had some sick collabs planned with FaZe. <laughs> it's funny how people say that uh, we need to decriminalize uh, sex work because it makes the conditions better. But where are the conditions better than in a private jet? I mean, oh that's pretty God. sweet. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. That is like... Why did you send that to me, dude? I did not laugh at that. That I disavow. I like that everyone in the chat that doesn't watch Chapo thinks Aaron said that. When in fact that was Alex. I could have never heard that joke because I don't follow Chapo Trap House, the show. Um, I like to separate the art from the artist. Uh, I disavow it. It deserves condemnation and it's parody. I would disavow Cometown if I knew what Cometown was. It's pretty funny though. That was a funny joke. Um I 
I'm not going to show Stav's Insta because I don't want to get banned. Can you guys stop asking me to fucking show Stav's Instagram? Why do you do this? Hypothetically, if I knew what the podcast Come Town was, I would recommend it because uh, it seems like a funny name and a funny premise. Like, um, you know, it's like, imagine the DSA, but gay. Do you know what stupid poll is? It's that I actually, okay, all jokes aside, I don't know what stupid poll is, but that's probably because I'm a boomer. Isn't it just like, isn't it just like edgy fucking like Nazballs and, and, um, and just people who are like, I fucking hate identity politics. Like I hate it real bad. And then it's just like, but I'm a socialist. Like, I think we need to have healthcare. But I, I don't even know. I, actually, that's not true. Because I don't think those fucking people are like... Are they are they like Nazbal and shit? I don't know. Stupid poll. Critique of essentialism. Solidarity with conservative working class. Are Nazballs better than liberals, though? What? No. What the fuck? I actually, I don't. No, no, they're not. No, because Nazball is a fucking meme. Okay, you can't have, you can't claim to be class conscious. And, and act like uh, you're providing or your perspective is, is guided by a materialist analysis and then believe in some fake nationalist bullshit, okay? Like, that's not a real, that's not like a real concept. Like, they're not, they're just like fake lefties. Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm a lefty and, and I believe in Oh, I'm a lefty and I believe in class consciousness, but also white people. What? Oh, you're a left. Oh, you're a lefty, but for whites only. Okay, got it. Makes a lot of sense. You're not the arbiter of leftism, Hassan. I'm not. That's why before I said it's like fake. Because it's weird to be like, oh, I think class consciousness is important and and capitalism is bad. Here is my materialist analysis of why it's bad. But also here is some like totally immaterial bullshit about white identity that I must protect. That's not me being the arbiter. That's me giving you why it's like a real reason why it's not, uh, why it's just like a fucking fake uh, or incorrect understanding. <sighs> okay. I did see the Miskiff. I did see the Miskiff clip uh, with me in it. I, I'm gonna go to guys. I'm gonna go to bed. Same thing can be said about socialism. No. What? How?
right. Um, don't forget to subscribe to me if you like this commentary. Um, my, uh, my, my, uh, supposed best friend is watching Hark Dan right now. Anyway, uh, I'm rating, I look like Lil Bill. I don't, don't subscribe if you don't want to. I don't care. Have a good night, everybody.